This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the legendary Michael Watson, MBE, of course, here at his home in Chingford, East London. Michael, how are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. I mean, the force is back massively. I'm training every day. I'm enjoying enjoying everything. It's It's definitely the way. All, all, all is all is good. Glad to hear it. It's interesting you say you know the force is back. We've seen a lot of uh, people from your generation, fighters, making actual comebacks for kind of exhibition fights, that kind of thing. What, what do you make of that whole thing of fighters maybe not being able to let go and, and having these exhibitions? Basically, that's mainly a hype. Mm. But I, I'm the real the real deal. Uh, I, I, I love the price of what I'm preaching. And let's talk a bit about your career. You started boxing, I believe, rather late at 14 years old. We hear often kids starting at eight, nine. What got you into the sport in the first place? I, I, I got into a street fight by a bully. A long story short, the bully bullied me. I got beaten up. I thought to myself, I can't keep going through life, getting beaten up by big men. Uh, I diverted into boxing gym from there. And did you take to it straight away? Were you a natural? Yes, I I clicked on. Everything just went well, perfectly. I thought, this is my destiny, to be a boxer. Was it always kind of a sport once you started it that you enjoyed more than other sports? I know you're mad about football, of course, now, but was boxing always the one for you? Amazingly, my icon was Muhammad Ali. He the one who inspired me to box from the beginning. From from watching Muhammad Ali and and his artistry and his entertainment, it made me enjoy boxing so much more. And did you try to box in a similar style to Ali? Yes, I did. Yeah, you. I remember watching you as a kid myself, and you were excellent. You, you wanted to say something? It was the Muhammad, the Muhammad Ali technique. I used, I used against Nigel Ben, the rubber that, 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 that but When Ali fought George Foreman, I used the same t- tactics against Nigel when they pulled off. And that was the Commonwealth title win, of course. Now, that was a great performance. Everyone from my generation remembers watching it. But the first uh, Eubank fight was another excellent performance. Uh, which was your best over your career, do you think? Absolutely, nice, Ben. One and only. A little bit helps. Yeah. And finally, Nigel at the the park. Me and why is that? Why was that the best uh, performance you ever put on? Because I was in the best shape mentally and physically. I've never been in fit ever before. Uh, I trained for my life um, for my life against Nigel. I'm putting on the best performance ever against that man. And your first uh, world title shot came against the body snatcher, uh, Mike McCallum. What, obviously, unfortunately, didn't go your way, but what was so special about Mike McCallum? Very technical, very skillful. And was that because you were such a good technical boxer? Did you prefer it when opponents were more like Nigel, you know, aggressive, and they'd come to you and you could counter, whereas someone like McCallum was a bit more standoff. With, with, with Nigel, different class of fighter, very powerful and very quick, explosive. Nigel, Nigel had his own te- technical elements. He slipped the punches very well. He didn't slip them, didn't, he didn't slip them all very well. <laughs> Not against you. But he gave him the fight of my life. He, said, he certainly did. And the, we talk, oh, I talked about the first Eubank fight. The majority of people that saw it felt you'd done enough to get the judge's decision. Um, and unfortunately, it went the other way. 
how did you react to that? How did you feel? You know, I'll take my out to Chris Eubank. He's a, he, he's a truly a great fighter. You know, he's, he's a true legend. He gave, me, he gave me the fight of my life, him and I as well. A true warrior he is. Were you upset at all at the time that you didn't get the decision? Naturally, I was. Yes, yes, I was. And then, of course, the rematch, which you wouldn't know at the time, but would ultimately change your life. Um, just tell us how you felt going into that. Because of what you'd done in the first fight, you must have felt very confident going into the rematch. I will charge up for, for the rematch. I thought to myself, this fight goes distance. No way would I have won. Would I win? I, I, it's got to be a KO. I'm trying for a short fight. <laughs> I really did. And then you dropped him. Ironically, it wasn't in the early rounds, but you dropped him in round 11 um, and you were ahead on the scorecards. How close did you feel at that point to, to finishing him and to, to winning that title? I'm well, well ahead. I was well ahead. Well ahead, of, well ahead on points. Mm. And, you know, I, was, I was in total control. And we all know what happened in the 12th round. We don't need to go over that in any detail. How much now do you remember from that period after the fight? Well, I can remember, Dan. I've been in total control from the first round. I was Chris Huban. In the grass, in the grass of my hand, everywhere I wanted him, he was there. I was told, in total control. When you look back on the fight now, because of what happened at the end, can you still take a lot of fond memories and pride from your performance up until that point? Absolutely. I can visualise my, myself from body punches, Chris Hubank. And he just, kept, he just kept on running. Uh, I just kept him following throughout the fight. And obviously you suffered a horrendous injury in the 12th round. You've, your recovery has inspired you know, millions of people around the world. It's going to be hard to put it into words, but how tough was it for you, particularly that first year after the fight? How challenging was it? You know what gives me strength from life? I knew this, this accident had to happen for a reason. Mm. You know, what makes me strong? My, 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 my gift of inspiring people. Even the, help, help, the helpless soul in life. When Ali came to the hospital to see me, he passed on a message saying to me, he saw the fight between me and him and Nigel. And he's, he's, he's so proud of me, he said to me. And I'm like him. The fight between me and Nigel he reminded him of me and him, him, him with me fighting George Foreman. He inspired me. He said, listen, I want you to, I'm going to hand, I'm gonna hand the torch over to you. When I pass this world, I want you to live, live I want you to live in me. I want to live in you, Mike. That's what he said to me. And that inspired me massive. I'm going to keep that torch, torch burning. The Ali torch burning. A lot, a lot of people think I'm Muhammad Ali. I call Muhammad Ali my bigger brother. The torch light I have to, I have to shine. Inspire souls in need. That's my, that's my, that's his mind. And you are a man of faith, of course, and you said just now everything happens for a reason. Do you feel what happened to you was purely part of God's plan for you to inspire others? Are you Danny? Yeah. Danny, you know what? I said this and I'll say it again. I'm so glad this accident has happened. From my heart and soul, because when I was up in the limelight, I had a whole lot of people around me. 
people I, I didn't recognise. They wanted me to take me here, then and there. I would my mind. I was not at peace. I was, I was not content. And I had all wrong. Wealthy men didn't want to take me out to their clubs. I, I felt very, very uneasy. If I were a champion, I'd be lost. I'd be a lost soul. But I thank God Almighty that I had this accident. I'm a, I'm a total peace and content. And I've got the right people around me. I'm a very happy man now. I know I'm a lot of sincere people around me now. I'm very joyful. Um, um, Thank God for Jesus. I'm born again. I'm that total peace, Dan. And I'm happy. I've got the right people around me. This, if this accident didn't happen, we we wouldn't be doing this. God bless, bro. God bless. Did you ever, and I think I already know the answer, but did you ever have any resentment or animosity towards Eubank or towards the referee? Or? Not in the slightest. It's all God's plan. Because I've, I've helped a lot of souls in my life. I did the, the floor marathon walk. I raised some money for Brennan Spine Foundation, 125 pounds. I'm £25,000 for a brain spine foundation. And I'm inspiring helpless souls in life. My thoughts are shining but that brightly through the dark spells in it throughout life. You've raised millions for charity. You inspire countless people around the world. But a real tangible thing that came as a result of what happened to you was the British Boxing Board of Control making a huge number of changes to improve the medical capabilities for boxers. Yeah, I was going to say, you must be immensely proud of that legacy. Also, my incident has said, I don't know, I know about Spence Oliver. Oh, of course, against Devacoff. No, sure, Spence Oliver. Thank God my sacrifice has saved another, another life. Well, that's the one we know about because he was so seriously injured. It, it may have saved... Hundreds of lives, you Gerald know. McLennan. Gerald McLennan, of course. That that was the first fight I went to see. Another example. Yeah, Gerald McLennan, Nigel Ben was the the first fight I ever went to see. Why I, I went through what, what I've been through for the same on these lines. And now for a purpose. And now the shows in Britain have to have paramedics, ringside ambulances, ringside. The right facilities, uh, neurological units in the hospitals. They took me to the wrong hospital. I'm a miracle. I'm a living miracle. Then I shouldn't. I should not be alive. But it's not just that you survived. You've really kind of made the most of it. You haven't wallowed in self pity. You haven't let this beat you. You've used it as a way to inspire others. I think that's that's incredible. The Christ like attitude. Hmm. I mean. I've got a fair God in my heart. I try to be Christ-like. Humility. It does help. That's where I get the peace from. The peace of God in my heart. And just give people watching an idea of what life is like for you now, like day to day. What 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 do you do? What do you get up to? Well, I've got to, I've got to run my right man by my side. He's taking me here, there, and everywhere. I, I'm I'm on my top each and every day. I'm I, I'm training every day. Yeah, the fourth is back. Yeah. I'm busy 24-7. I'm out of isolation. Like, like I said before, the, the force is truly back. I'm going, I'm going to gym inspiring young, young, the younger generation. And they love, they, they, they love me. They love me massively. And I love them likewise. And it must be great when you get to go out and meet, particularly the younger generation who may not have seen you in your prime as a boxer, 
and just showing them what can be achieved. Oh, when, they look, when, when they do their research on me, they're goth, mate. Mm. I, I've, got, I've got a gift that I've got to utilise to inspire, a gift of inspiration. It's, it's working out now. And you do, obviously, lots of work for charity, but you also do personal appearances, which serves to inspire a great deal of people. We recently saw you on the football pitch at the Emirates Stadium, Absolutely. beloved Arsenal chasing a title. What, what was that like? It was very marginal because it's it been 30 years since I, I last went to the Arsenal and been wheeled on the pitch in a wheelchair. Mm. And I... I thought, I thought extremely overwhelmed to be walking on the pitch on my legs. My little, my moving legs now, not stuck in the walls here. But it, it was the most known mission accomplished. They love me massive. I love them. Are they going to win the title this year? All we can do is just hope for the best. Hope, hope so current boxing scene how much of a, an interest do you take in it you can't be old school uh, the old school living forever uh, it's money that, that ruined the fighters determination and motive it's, they don't hunger they're, they're, they're too fed. They're not hungry. The young, gener gen gen young generation today, they don't hunger. That's lacking the talent. Lack of talent. Do you watch much boxing now? Not really. And is that because you're disappointed with the younger generation? That's, that's what it is. Do you keep in contact with your former opponents, predominantly, you know, Nigel Benn, Chris Eubank? No, no. When I, when I, think, I, I see these fighters on and on again, we're all busy. I believe um, Eubank's currently on a TV show about people being kept in the dark and, and <laughs> whether they're scared or not. I haven't seen it, I must admit, but it, it seems interesting. Got a great personality, hasn't he? He's a remarkable man, and I've got a lot, a lot, a lot, I've got a lot, a lot of love, Chris. Not animosity. He's a good man. He, he, he means well. We saw him on Piers Morgan's uh, life stories. You were there in the audience, and you had a very emotional. Um, exchange on that show moved deeply moved a lot of people what did it feel like for you it's good to be real I, I, I've got a lot of respect for Chris and the fight and, and as a person he, he, he does mean well and both his children and Nigel's children are now fighting themselves. They're, they're professional boxers. What would you make of that? Because recently there was talk of a fight between a Eubank and a Ben and kind of recreating that, what you guys had um, in the 80s and the 90s. Will it ever be like that again? It's down to the young generations, generation to do their thing. Same place. It's, 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 that's business. That's how it goes. Follow, follow their father, father's footsteps. They should be well inspired. When you were living in that era and you were competing with the likes of Nigel, Chris, Mike McCallum and so on, did you, did you get an understanding of what a special time it was? But it's a legacy of great, great fighters, great legacies. Cement. Cement legacies. Great fighters produce great fights. That's what it's all about. Do you ever watch your own fights back? Every, every time. I love to watch myself. The force at his best. Oh, it's all, it's, oh, I'm always well entertained to watch my fights. And apart from the way your career ended, which we've talked about, any regrets from your career? Not in the slightest. It's, it's, it's boxing that's made me who I am. It's 
it's made the world our name globally. We love the world. Thank, thank God for boxing. Then look at the likes of Mom and Ali. Mm. And it, I've been blessed. For my um, for Muhammad Ali to come over with his family to see me in the hospital and to compliment, compliment me saying, I'm a, I am an amazing man. Come from the, the greatest of all time. I am an amazing man, that's Muhammad Ali. And we are family, he said to me. And went through my heart, made me feel so strong. Walter well, well, can be very powerful mm. on how it's selected. And he selected the right word to make me strong, to break out, out of my karma. And on that note, words being incredibly powerful, there'll be, you know, hopefully thousands of people watching this interview. What message would you like to send out from all the fans out there that want to know how you're getting on and, and that look to you for inspiration? When, when, you, when, you, when you're having a hard time in life, just don't give up hope. Life is too precious to quit. Have that self-belief and determination. If I can do it, so can you. God bless. God bless. Michael, really appreciate your time. It's an honour. And um, yeah, let's speak again soon.